Good evening everyone, time for another member update. This is the silver chart, the daily chart provided by netdania.com and this is the Dow 30 overlaid on top of the silver chart. So you can see here that we have this uh, potential cup and saucer type of breakout here. Uh, pretty bullish formation just based on the technicals that we have here on the Dow. It appears that the Dow wants to break out to new all-time highs. Very interesting because that's going to go above, the for the first time, uh, explode above the all-time silver high, uh, which is an equivalent Dow 15, 690. So we're trading at $49 equivalent for silver, whereas the real silver price, or the paper silver price, is all the way down at 21.67. So again they are promoting the paper that's very important you can see that this divergence between paper assets and real physical assets is very dramatic. It's pretty much unprecedented except for maybe here and uh, you can see what happens that they tend to correct together. So which way will they go? No one knows, but perhaps the powers that be. But I wanted to point this out. This is very important because people tend to get discouraged. They lose sight of things. But you have to understand that the powers that be want everybody in an investment they can control. We know that stocks are an investment they can control because of things like the DTCC, uh, stocks held in street name, 401ks, mutual funds, all this stuff, they can change the rules at any moment and uh, take all the money away. Now, I want to show you this guest post here of uh, Charles Hughes Smith on uh, Zero Hedge because uh, he talks about the timing of the next crisis and uh, why we've been wrong. And uh, I just want to look at the first reason he, he gives here. Uh, here are 10 possible factors in why it's so difficult to predict the timing of the crisis slash reset. Doom and gloomers, myself included, have been wrong for four years. The financial markets continue higher and the excesses of the status quo continue expanding with little ill effect so far. Why it is so difficult to predict the timing why is it so difficult to predict the timing of the onset of the crisis slash collapse? The question is equally valid for both bulls and bears. How could all the boosters of housing be so wrong in 2008 when they asserted that housing is not in a bubble? I've assembled 10 possible factors in why it's so difficult to predict when the next crisis slash reset will occur. One, everyone in the status quo has a stake in its survival. Every one of us wants to get our social security, our disability, maintain the freedom of a personal vehicle, have access to clean water and all the other goodies, and those becoming or maintaining wealthy and the powerful in the current system want to retain their wealth and power. There are titanic forces that will bend whatever needs to be bent to keep their share of the swag flowing to them. This is just as true of the welfare recipient as it is the global corporation or politico. We shouldn't underestimate the power of this desire to maintain the status quo and bend perceptions to make that appear as if it is just not possible but inevitable. So that's a very important reason for why we're seeing what we're seeing. Everyone is on the same boat. So you could use an analogy of the Titanic uh, people near the end before it hits an iceberg who recommend or volunteer that, hey, this thing's out of control. It's uh, going to hit an iceberg. Let's get off um, in a lifeboat before this happens. They're not going to be listened to. Now, let's look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average overlaid with Caterpillar and Goldman Sachs. The reason why I put up this chart 
is to show you two companies that pretty much couldn't be farther from each other as far as business goes now admittedly they're both affected by the economy and they're both affected by other things but as far as their business models go they're really not related to each other so we would expect to see some difference in the beta but you can see that uh, these two companies trade pretty much in lockstep with the Dow so the Dow is this blue line and Caterpillar is the red line and Goldman Sachs is the green line and we see a potential breakout occurring at the end of trading today so my guess is the Dow is probably going to go into new highs and uh, that that's just based on a number of things but technically it looks like it's going to happen but the question is why is it that these companies and the average itself would trade in such a tight beta obviously you can tell from this chart that the investors whoever they are whether they're mutual funds pension funds and individual investors it doesn't matter obviously they are basing their investment decisions on the same thing and that same thing is not the fundamentals of the company so what we're looking at here is a money supply slash liquidity issue with derivatives and other things and not fundamentals of the company so that's very important because we need to understand that all of these people are in the same boat and that boat is headed for an iceberg now I want to show you a uh, not a video but a uh, transcript from a video uh, I don't know if you're familiar with Catherine Austin Fitz but Catherine Austin Fitz was uh, part of the cabinet I believe uh, during under Reagan uh, she was with the let's see she was assistant secretary of housing and federal housing commissioner at the US Department of Housing and Urban Development in the first Bush administration and I want you to look at her explanation of why everybody is in the same boat and why they're not willing to get off uh, so uh, this woman is quoting her she says I found what she shares in the video from May 30th 2013 about her experience talking about the illegal drug economy with participants at a spiritual conference extremely compelling especially for parents of preteens and teenagers Ms. Fitz says quote I've been asked by a friend to speak to a group of a group called spiritual frontiers foundation they have a conference once a year where they explore how they can help our society evolve spiritually they're very committed to a higher spiritual life and I have been asked to give a speech called quote how the money works in organized crime end quote which later became a very funny famous article quote narco dollars for beginners so I'm in the middle of the speech talking about how the US Congress had had hearings about allegations of narcotics trafficking trafficking by the intelligence agencies into South Central LA it's called the so-called dark alliance allegations I don't know if you remember that but that was Gary Webb it was covered in I think it was the San Jose uh, paper you'll have to look it up but uh, uh, Gary Webb was uh, later he he died mysteriously we'll just leave it at that it's called the so-called dark alliance allegations at that time the Department of Justice had told a reporter who I was working with that the US economy launders 500 billion to a trillion dollars a year in illegal money that's just not uh, that's not just narcotics trafficking it's financial fraud illegal gambling everything so I said to this wonderful group of spiritually evolved committed people what would happen if we stop being the global leader in money laundering they said well you know it would be a problem because that money would not go to the New York Stock Exchange if we stopped you know the money would leave and go to Hong Kong or Zurich and we'd have trouble refinancing the government deficit 
So I said, well, let's pretend there's a big red button up here on the lectern. And if you push that button, you can stop all hard narcotics trafficking in your country, your community, your neighborhood, your state, your country tomorrow, thus offending the people who control not only half a trillion to a trillion dollars a year of dirty money, but the accumulated capital thereon. Who here will push the button? And out of a hundred people dedicated to evolving our society spiritually, only one would push the button. I wouldn't let him answer, so I said to the other 99, why would you not push the button? And they said, we don't want our IRA and 401k to go down in value. We don't want our mutual funds to decline and we don't want our government checks to stop because we don't, you know, if you had trouble financing the government deficit, our government checks would stop or our taxes would go up. And so I said, so you want the powers to continue to market drugs to your neighborhood's children to keep your taxes low and your 401k going up? And they said, yes, that's right. So you can see from that, and I don't agree with Catherine Austin Fitz on a lot of things, especially not spiritual things, but I believe the story, I think it's true. I think you can see from the chart here that we're talking about a gigantic paper Ponzi scheme that everyone is invested in. And the number of people who are invested in physical silver is very, very tiny the number of people who are invested in these phony paper assets is very, very large. Now, you know, contrarian theory, uh, the basis behind contrarianism is that once everyone is on board going the same direction, then it is inevitable that things will turn and go the other way. The reason why in markets is very, very simple. If everybody is long the Dow, there's nobody left to buy. Conversely, if everybody is short silver, there's nobody left to sell. So it's very, very hard at these times to be a contrarian, but uh, I'm proposing that this is the exact time that you want to be a contrarian. Uh, everybody now that's involved in the financial markets, that's involved in the central bank, that's involved in a government position, all of the regulators, everyone has a stake in making this paper system go up. And they also have a stake in making this real asset go down. But ultimately, uh, things will out and markets will out. And we're going to find that this is completely reversed. This is going to crash all of their money is going to be lost. This is going to explode to the upside and the people that are involved are going to become very wealthy. And we'll talk to you next time.